is no human, there is no social, there is no governmental control over what these technologies are doing and will do. How are you going to stop trillions of dollars industry in building these, these godlike machines? You know, the, the robot industry, like the, the future Microsofts and Intels and so on in the 2030s, 2040s, I, I believe will be a artificial brain based and just enormous. There may be enormous political rivalries for the dominant country between China and the US. Now, if that's the case, the development of this artificial intelligence will just keep growing. Even if it goes secret, even if the general population start to really rebel against it, as they get really upset. But I think the major reason why it's not going to stop is about half of the population will be ideologically in favor of it going on. That's why the so-called white man put up himself as God. Say what? If there has to be a God, I am. We are going to become gods. Period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute. You don't have to participate. But if you're going to interfere with me becoming God, you're going to have big trouble. Then we'll have warfare. For one group, you'd be building gods. It's, it's just you know, amazing. It's, it's awe-inspiring. It's energizing, right? It's, it's, it's setting a goal for humanity. There's the whole universe out there, right? You know, the big picture. And on the other hand, the potential risk of seeing the whole human species annihilated by, by these superior creatures who, who could just... And you did what you wanted when you wanted, because you thought you were God. You tore down God's boundaries, you tore down God's schools, and you made up your own rules. The only way you can prevent me in this, in this 50 year is to kill me. If you kill me, I'll kill you. I'm anticipating the most passionate war that has ever been. We're not talking about the survival of a, of a tribe or a people or a country. We're talking about the survival of a whole species. So, so the passion levels will be extreme. I deserve hell. You deserve hell. You got to see that you deserve the wrath and anger and vengeance. What I'm what I'm talking about is a renewed embrace of our existence. Okay. It's got problems and it's finite, but um, uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not driven to flight from it. Uh, we have to learn humility, uh, species humility. The, the, the more I think about that versus that, the more magnificent that becomes, because its potential is just so much greater. A billion, billions of people get wiped out on the cosmic scale as a cosmos, right? If you try to think in those, that's nothing compared to that. But if you can't see that, this is absolutely monstrous. You just don't even want to talk to them. Probably most people can anticipate horror. It's it's a fairly simple concept to understand. You know, people getting killed. You know, people get run over by cars all the time. You just multiply that by a billion, or whatever, right? That's relatively easy to understand. That is much harder. It's very exciting because something will happen. Uh, the, without that, nothing will happen, and maybe we'll have a civilization that lasts for a million years and does the same thing every day. And then, when the sun. Uh, gets too hot or too cold it's going goes away so i don't see the point i don't see the value of anything that doesn't change you're saying in x number of thousands of years the sun is going to explode so we have to prepare for it now okay. and i say well okay that's interesting but how about preparing for the essentially toxic shock of our planet today or if you walk around you see a lot of people with no housing no place to live not enough food, 
So the explosion of the sun can wait. Only a fool is going to pollute the water that his own damn kids have to drink. Only a fool is going to what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to pollute the air that he has to breathe. This is a moment in time where for the first time we can truly imagine feeding everyone. I mean, this is something new, without precedence. We are able to have more humans. Uh, we are able to uh, fight against diseases, childhood diseases, so that there can be more people and they can live longer. And isn't this wonderful? Well, no. Of course it's not wonderful. That's exactly the problem. There are too many people and they're living too long and they're using up the resources of the Earth for the human species. One species out of a billion species is using up all of the resources for its own material betterment. Every moment that I speak, another species is being extinguished. We are moving into the unknown and we see lots of possibilities for catastrophe. And the immediate reaction is, well, we should stop development in some way. And yet we can't. We're on this, thing, you know, this raceway. We really, we can't stop it because if we try to stop it, it will be completely unsustainable. The human population has risen to a magnitude that could not be sustained without technology. Well, I can tell them what we do now. We establish small communities with small technologies. It's very simple. Just as we have today the Amish, who want to stabilize their culture at a late 19th century level of technology, I can imagine a group, um, I like to call them the humanish, who might want to stay merely human and say, you know, let's just, okay, we'll keep our internet connections, but let's not have any brain plugs, let's not upgrade our intelligence, let's just keep things as they are today, that's enough. And if they want to do that, fine, I think they should be quite able to do that. But most of us, I think, will see the advantages of living longer, getting smarter, refining our emotions and our personality. You can't go back and you can't stand still. If the thunder don't get you, then the lightning will. We've been traveling this technological path for 15,000 years. It's a little late to now rear up and try and turn in a new direction. Our hands, our minds were made.